So many people have asked me why I continue to remain in the Joomla community. I have a lot of friends and colleagues who work with other frameworks like Ruby on Rails or Django and people who don't use PHP really. And they're working in startups and in other software companies and they ask Joe, you know, why are you still working in the Joomla community and doing Joomla projects? And the answer that I keep coming back with is that Joomla is a community where I have an opportunity to share what I know with the community. And at the same time, the community shares things with me and I learn from the community. And that's what I really love about the Joomla project and the community. And it goes back to something my parents taught me about showing interest in other people. It's that you have to show interest in other people uh, to, to just uh, to learn in life. And it is something that they taught me from the Bible in Philippians 2.4, where it says, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And that's not only something that has served me throughout my career, but it's also a quality that I see in our community. A lot of you who were around during the Mambo days will remember this mural that was made out of the forum avatars. All these pictures that make up this mural, oh, it's a little hard to see, but um, they're all avatars from the Open Source Matters forum, which became the Joomla forum. And each and every one of those people has a different story. There are teachers and youth pastors and musicians and artists and programmers, and they're all people that came to our community and had something to share and stuck around. And so all these people have something to share with us. So in the Joomla community, people have learned skills just by talking back and forth with each other. Like I have seen posts on there where people said that they learned HTML and CSS just by talking through things on the forum and reading posts and trying to figure out what, how to solve their problems and just by talking with other people and building relationships with them. And last year I did a lightning talk and if you were here for that, uh, you'll remember that that's what I say is Joomla's true merit. Is it's the relationships that we build through the software that we're building together. Joomla is about more than code. Uh, like I just said, it is about the relationships and it's about a community, community that we all build together through the problems that we're trying to solve and the, the way that we're trying to learn from each other. Uh, so Joomla and Open Source Matters is not the only organization that has realized that it's more than just technology. By a show of hands, how many people in this room own an Apple device? Almost everyone. Okay, so I'm definitely talking about something that's familiar to the majority of the people in this room. Apple has realized that the success of their company is relying on more than just the technology. It's the, that the success of Apple hinges at the intersection of technology and the liberal arts. So they know at Apple that it's not about the processors that they put into their devices. It's not about the, the latest software architecture that they're employing in the, the software that they're building. It's about the combination of the technology and the problems that they're trying to solve for the people buying their products. Uh, they know that they, they need to meet people where they're at and they need to look into uh, the interests of what people are trying to, the, the problems that they're trying to solve as well as the desires that people have. Uh, that they want to fulfill with the Apple products. So shifting back to Joomla and making a comparison to that, 
We have the Joomla logo, which all of you are familiar with. We have uh, four different colored J's that make up the logo. And I'm going to take a second look at this logo and extend the definition a little bit. So Joomla is a community where the intersection of the interests of these four groups meet. We have programmers who write PHP and JavaScript code. We have designers who uh, primarily work with HTML and CSS and images. We have site implementers who take pre-built extensions and templates and build websites for clients. And then we have the end users who use the websites that are built by the implementers. So we have the interests of all four of these groups that come together in the Joomla project. And when we build features that address the interests of all four of these groups simultaneously, those are the most powerful features for Joomla. That's what really drives the Joomla project forward, is when we add features that serve the interests of all four of these groups simultaneously. So we're going to take a look at some of the features that are currently in Joomla and a few features that could potentially be added to Joomla just as a way of testing this theory. Um, there are some that serve all four and then some that serve a few less. But let's just take a look at some of these for a minute. So first, there is the strapped admin template that uh, Kyle Ledbetter started and that the community is really rallying behind now. I would say that this template is an example of something that serves all four groups. So for programmers, it's great because I'm a programmer and now with the strapped admin template, I'll be able to use uh, just some standard HTML and CSS and I'll be able to pull from this toolkit of user interface elements without having to write my own so much. So that's a great benefit to me. It's a benefit to designers. So if you're a designer and you need to change the admin interface, you already have a good base to start from. And you know, if it's just as something as simple as uh, you just want to change the color scheme, that's something that you can do from a central place and that's another benefit of the, the strapped admin template. Then it also definitely benefits site implementers because it's an easier template to use and it's also uh, an easier template to present to clients and organizations that they're building websites for. And then finally, it's also a huge benefit to end users because the template is uh, much cleaner and much easier to understand. So next, let's take a look at a, another feature. Uh, there's a database driver for Microsoft SQL Server. And that one doesn't serve needs of all the community, but it does serve the needs of programmers and site implementers. So if I'm a programmer and I want to work with Microsoft SQL Server, all I have to do is use the code that's already in Joomla. I don't have to write any more code in addition to what's already there and I can just start making queries against a Microsoft SQL Server database. And if you're a site implementer, you can go to an organization that already has a huge investment in a Microsoft SQL Server and say, look, you don't need to install another database. You don't need to train new database administrators. Joomla can run on top of the database that you already have. Um, another, this is a potential feature that could possibly be added. Uh, let's say we had a less driven template color chooser. So that's going to be of benefit to designers and implementers and end users because anyone from any of these three groups would be able to just go in and pick a color and have that change the color scheme for the template through uh, less. Uh, if you're not familiar with less, it's a, a superset of CSS that people have written that compiles down to standard CSS so that you can have things like color definitions that are all centralized. Uh, let's say we added a, a new template that's based off another one of the CSS frameworks that's out there, like maybe the, the 960 grid or uh, one of the other template frameworks. That's going to be a benefit to primarily designers and site implementers. Um, you might have a, an implementer who knows enough HTML to move things around and to 
make it do what, uh, what they want to do for the website. And then designers might use that as a base for a template they're, that they're designing. But it's not really going to be of benefit to programmers or end users so much. And then finally, another idea I had was, what if we had a Git client for Joomla that was baked right into Git, or into uh, Joomla? And it would just allow you to go back through your repository and check out a different version of the code in time. Uh, this would be something that would benefit programmers and designers and implementers who are all working on a website together. And that way, you wouldn't have to uh, pull up a Git client to necessarily look through your history. So that's something that could potentially benefit those three groups, wouldn't really benefit end users so much. So from, as you can see here, not all the features that we're ever going to add to Joomla are always going to benefit all the three groups, but the most desirable and the most useful features that get added are the ones that serve all four of them simultaneously. So the features that serve more roles are going to bring us closer to the software that we all want to use as Joomla. And we are making progress towards becoming that software. Uh, we now have releases that are coming in on a regular schedule, and that's great. Uh, because now uh, third-party developers and site implementers can plan ahead and say, OK, there's a new release coming around September, and so that might be when I look at doing some upgrades for my other sites. We have uh, more features that are being added with every release, so we're not waiting several years before we add a feature. It's more like six months now, and we just add a feature and get feedback, make some adjustments, add another feature, get more feedback. And uh, that's been a, a great help to the community. Also, updates are now just clicks away. Instead of having to uh, download a patch file, and if anyone here is from the Mambo days, you might remember you had to run individual SQL files against your database to get the database schema up to date with uh, the latest version of Mambo. And uh, that, that was extremely messy. And now uh, we have a system that upgrades the database and the files at once. So that's a good thing. And then we also have that fantastic admin UI that's on its way. However, we are missing some features. Uh, that should have said something else. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're, we're missing uh, a live and dev configuration. So for instance, I work on websites uh, locally as well as on a staging server. And so right now I have to make changes to the configuration.php file to get it to play nicely in the, the repository. And so that's a bit of an issue. Uh, for scheduled tasks, at the moment, we don't really have a centralized way of doing that. And that's something that we really need in core and everyone using the same system. And then finally, uh, advanced media management is another uh, sore spot for Joomla right now. Uh, right now, we're just essentially uploading images into a folder. And that's it. And that's something that we could really improve in the Joomla project. So uh, many of the web problems have already been solved, and we can learn from other projects outside our community. We don't have to reinvent the wheel each time we encounter a problem like this. If we look to the interests of the uh, community at large beyond Joomla, we can find solutions for these problems that I mentioned and many others that we face. So first, uh, database schema changes. That was the point that was missing uh, from my other slide there for a second. Um, so we do have a system in place that updates the database schema, but it's not uh, database agnostic. We have to create a separate SQL file for every database that we support. And I believe there are some changes in the works to help abstract that out a bit so that we don't have to write separate code for each database uh, update. But we can take a look at what Rails has done. And they have a very a code-driven, database-agnostic approach. So that way, they just write some Ruby code. And that code is good for every database that Rails supports. And Joomla could really use something like that, not just for Joomla core, but also for Joomla extensions. Because right now, uh, at my company, I work on uh, a component called the podcast suite. 
And we're facing this where right now we can only really support uh, MySQL because that's the, the most common database out there. And if we wanted to support more, we would have to put a lot of resources into testing other databases. And if we had a system in place where we could update the database schema without worrying about which database is underneath, that would be a huge boon to us. So the people that would benefit the most from this solution would be programmers and site implementers. Uh, because then site implementers would have more extensions to choose from that would uh, work with multiple databases. So if you had a, a site implementer on one of those Microsoft SQL databases, they wouldn't have to worry about whether Podcast Suite supports it or not. So for the live and dev site configurations, pretty much any framework outside of Joomla that I've touched, be it Rails or Django or any of the PHP-based frameworks like Zend, We'll have a feature in there that will uh, allow for multiple environments, whether you have like a dev and a staging and a, a live environment. Um, you can set up different environments in that framework and then commit that to the, data, to the repository. And then depending on which one you're loading it on, it'll load the different configuration file. So we need a consistent way of doing this in the core. I cannot uh, sustain this path in, in my organization of hacking the configuration.php file. Um, that's just going to get messy over time and it's going to be difficult because we're going to need to change things when we go to launch. Uh, so one possible solution is to uh, create a switch in Joomla that would pick from several different configuration files and then just pick the correct one based on the environment variable set in PHP. So this would benefit programmers and designers and implementers because you often have those three, uh, people in those three roles working together to build a website. And that way, if you have all three of those people uh, checking out a copy of the site, they don't have to worry about what's in the configuration. And uh, one thing I should have mentioned before is that you might find yourself as a, a member of more than one of these roles. So you might find yourself as a designer and an implementer, or an implementer and a programmer, or an end user and a designer. And uh, that might change uh, your perception on how some of these features get added. So for scheduled tasks, we could take a look at what Drupal has done. And they have a centralized task management system. So any recurring task that happens in Drupal is happening in a centralized place where it all gets listed, and then it's all running off one cron job. So that way, when you go to set up your computer, you just set up one, uh, one cron tab in Unix, and then that runs all of the automated tasks. And at the moment in Joomla, what we have is each individual extension, be it a module or a component, is checking a, a timeout for the cache and saying, okay, if five minutes have passed, go and check this news feed. So what happens is you are waiting for someone to come to your website to run an automated task. And that's not good. Because what happens is, if that five minutes have passed and a user has to come to your website, then they have to wait for that task to finish before the website displays. So if they hit stop, you know, maybe that stops whatever is happening and the task doesn't run or it finishes midway through or any, uh, any host of problems could happen because of that setup. So we have, we've got to get rid of the fake cron, the faux cron, um, and replace it with something that's a bit more robust. So once we have something in place that centralizes it, it's going to uh, benefit programmers because uh, right now every extension developer is writing their own thing to make this happen. Like uh, I've had to do this myself to, to make it work right. And uh, it'll benefit site implementers because then they'll have a panel where they'll be able to see all the recurring tasks and maybe make some adjustments. And then it's also going to benefit end users because then end users aren't going to have to wait for a task to run for the, the Joomla page to load. And then finally, for advanced media management, we should take a look at what WordPress is doing. They, whenever you upload an image to WordPress, it automatically creates different sizes of that image and lets you choose from those sizes. 
And on top of that, it also creates a separate folder for every post. So that way, if you have, uh, say, maybe 30 posts in your system, you're not sorting through 30 or 40 different images to find the one that you just uploaded. You're just looking for the ones for that article. So it would make uh, image searches and uploads a lot easier if we followed something a little bit closer to this convention. And this would benefit everyone, because as a programmer, I've had to implement this pretty much for every client project we've had, where they wanted to upload an image and have it automatically generate a thumbnail. And having something like this would take a lot of work away from me. And fortunately, we have some image resizing classes that are now in the platform. So those are available. We just need to write something to use those classes. It'll help designers, because now they won't be bothered to uh, resize images for articles. Uh, end users will just be able to do it themselves automatically when they upload the images. And again, the site implementers will uh, a lot of times get those questions from clients saying, well, why didn't this resize? You know, a, a lot of people expect things like that to happen automatically now. So that was a whole set of features that we could possibly add to Joomla. And uh, as you're thinking about it, that sounds like a lot of code. And you know, we're not going to write all of that code this weekend and get it out the door unless people are very, very ambitious. Um, so how can we go beyond Joomla this weekend while we're at this conference? First, go to the working group meetings. This is where uh, a lot of the high-level strategy for Joomla is being set. And we need everyone's input. We need people who have worked with concepts that aren't necessarily specific to Joomla. And we need you to speak up and talk about how those concepts are being implemented in other projects and how they're being worked with on the web at large. Because when people come to the Joomla project, we want our software to make sense. We don't want people to be fighting through things that we've set up the way just to, uh, to serve the needs that we've had in the past. We want to serve the needs that people have now. So definitely go to the working group meetings and speak up. Another thing you can do is attend the non-Joomla specific topics. I've noticed there are a lot of topics on the schedule that aren't necessarily specific to Joomla. Uh, specifically, there are ones about responsive design and other topics that you know, could be implemented in pretty much any system. And as you go to those topics, ask yourself, how would someone outside of Joomla approach this topic? And is the way that we're doing it in Joomla making sense? Because a lot of times, we'll implement something just to get it out there and to get it working, which is great. But sometimes that's where we stop. And we don't necessarily look to what other people are doing and we end up with uh, workflows that don't always make sense and that might be a little um, different. And then finally, going beyond just matching what the community around us is doing, how can we go beyond that and make Joomla's implementation the preferred approach? So you know, if we have, for instance, responsive design and we want to implement that in Joomla, how can we have people begin to point to Joomla saying, yeah, this is the way to do it? Uh, because once we do that, we begin to lead more of the, the web design and web development community, and we become the standard bearers, and we raise the standards for the people around us. And that way we can bring that quality of our community, where we share and learn from each other, to the web community at large. And then you can also attend the Joomla-specific topics and pretty much ask yourself the same question. You know, if I were new to Joomla, where would I get stuck with this concept? I have known programmers who have logged into the Joomla admin panel and get stuck at the dashboard. Like they see that dashboard and they're completely overwhelmed with choices and they don't know where to go. And so uh, that might be a, a little bit of, maybe a, an excessively high bar to set. But at the same time, you know, anything that we can do to make things clearer and more understandable for people who are new to the system is going to help us get more people into the community to join us. 
Another thing you should ask is, is there a way that we can extend this feature to serve more people? So maybe we added a feature to Joomla to serve our own needs for a specific project or for a specific use case that we had, but maybe we can take that feature and extend it a bit to serve more people. So ask yourself that as you're in the, uh, the Joomla-specific topics. And then finally, going back to the Joomla's true merit, you know, ask, learn from the presenters and ask questions. We're here to learn from each other and to teach each other, so learn from what the presenters are talking about and also ask questions. So in conclusion, uh, our software best benefits programmers, designers, site implementers, and end users simultaneously. So when we have features that benefit those four groups, those features are the most valuable for our project. Those are the ones that drive our project, and those are the ones that people are looking for the most. We can look beyond Joomla and look to other projects for inspiration. We don't have to uh, come up with the solutions for every problem ourselves. Uh, if we're not necessarily taking code from other open source projects and putting it directly in Joomla, we can still look at the concepts and see how people implemented things and use that as a guide for how we might be able to implement those in Joomla. And then finally, keep looking to the interests of others. That is what makes our community great and that is what's going to attract more people to our community. So with that, let's go beyond Jay.